28 was the number and where is JWB? JWB is right here. Challenge five standard invite coming up. Game one of how many? I don't know. Okay. Let's roll. Um, why not? Let's kick off with Sicilian. Nidorf. Yes. Coming up. A6 denotes that. And now what? Okay, so I'm not sure how much of this I uh, really know. I know the bishop belongs here because this is weak. D5. Take good care over the d5 square. That's the plan. And this knight wants to uh, be in a spot to watch this guy. I'm going to go with this. Stop this g4 idea and let's see how white responds to that. Hmm. I might not want to castle kingside anytime soon. There is sometimes a purpose in just leaving this rook in the h file. If white eventually gets in this g4 idea, there is a capture, and then the rook might have some uh, some play with like a rook up and over. But okay, this is uh, this is different. What's going on with that? Okay, well, what do you do in the meantime? Rook c8, queen c7, or b5. Those are the three candidate moves that jump to mind. If there's a fourth, it's this guy. And maybe of those four, this is the best. You know why? because it's his only move. So that's probably no surprise to Team White, correct? Did you follow that? Important idea. Mm. Rook c8, queen c7, b5. Um, the knight, when it plays here, what am I gonna do? And, um, well, let's see. Let's see about things here. I don't know if there's a... Actually, of the of the of rook c8 and queen c7, I'm more inclined to move my rook first. Maybe my queen could come out here at some point. I'm not sure. Um, what about b5, knight b6? That's actually an idea, isn't it? b5, knight b6... Yeah, actually, I'm not going to move rook b8 because I'm seeing actually some variations where if my knight gets to c4 and is captured, I can recapture with the pawn and then maybe play rook b8 and target the b2 point. So I think there's some purpose in running forward with the b5 move instead of declaring my rook's intentions just yet. Maybe the c file, maybe the b file, maybe I'll wait to see what white does in, in response to maybe a knight landing right here c4 the probably the the weakest point currently on white side of the board of the ranks one through four this one right here it's near the king a knight there is very annoying the king will most likely find it uh to be more comfortable on b1 and if it's on b1 and my knight's on c4 the knight is uh within checking distance from uh, d2, a3 possibilities. Forcing moves would, without a doubt, be present. And now I think that that can actually turn out to be a waste of time because I don't know that you could really tolerate a knight on c4. So knight b6. My queen is currently constrained to the defense of the knight, so... I already know the answer to this, but something that I do really quick is just make certain my queen cannot be deflected away from the defense of the knight. I'm not seeing that really as being a possibility, so um, it's going to be okay, in other words. And okay, clearly we're, we're just, white is prepping this move right here. I think um, there's something a bit off when you see a move like that, taking a rook off of a, a function, or a, excuse me, a half open file, if anything, this rook, I think, would have been better. And so now I think I can follow through with this idea of knight c4. After the capture, I recapture, hit the knight, and then maybe target this pawn. Another idea is to just say, you know what? Let's play in the center. 
let's open things up because I think I'm going to be in a better position or will I push bishop takes queen takes pawn takes guess what I don't have enough defense for it so maybe I should abandon that idea or is there something with actually b4 kicking that knight away and only then pawn push ah I'm gonna look into that one let's see interesting possibilities here knight c4 and uh, b4 and I guess maybe a rook b8 move that seems a bit too slow though it's too slow though I'm gonna try this one if the knight really wants to take up an outpost on d5 this bishop has to say so long okay now I think d5 it can be played successfully push let's give it a go I'm trying to open up the position at a moment where I think my pieces are better positioned this knight on the edge this knight now has the c5 square available but maybe not for so long if I could get d4 in in fact this is a serious problem I don't know that you could really tolerate a pawn on d5 with you know threatening to play here um, I am also watching over b4 even if I wasn't and it, it could be grabbed it's not without its problems because it does open up files towards that white king you want to be very cautious about pawn grabbing if your castle in opposite wings and that's exactly what we have here well I'm not castle just yet but I'm not gonna be castling queenside um, not in my right mind at least so um, what what are uh, White's candidate moves? I'm thinking either Bishop takes Knight or Pawn captures right away. I think this guy's going to end up having to leave soon. Um, I'm going to go with this one. I, I, I don't really want to spend too much time. Uh, there were many different possibilities there. Or not, not the Queen, actually, because I would just hang my Knight. But I'm not sure which of these two Knights is best. Maybe it was better for this Knight so that I could have a Knight A5 move available. Uh, we're going to see, though. As a uh, pretty smooth follow-up ideas, I think something like a5, a4 comes with uh, great effect. And uh, this uh, this is going to lead to trouble, isn't it? We're going to have an in-betweener. Knight takes bishop. Ooh, an in-betweener. Okay. Well, trade queens interesting I think I want to trade Queens and then uh, could I uh, just take this then there's gonna be a knight fork uh, let's not and say we did to that one King takes is no good because of this so less than a minute for uh, white interesting game so far um, let me put pressure on this knight my bishop would really like to do something other than uh, sit on e7 at this point and there is absolutely no need to castle in a position like this. Um, kingside castle does not even enter my thought process. King to e7 is going to be perfect. So let's do it. Keep it center. It's on a dark square opposite this bishop. And now what? Uh, boy, let's see. Um, oh, this is going to be a problem I think I take. And then... I play here, if I'm not mistaken. Hit that bishop. Might be an in-betweener here, but there's no time to figure this all out. Tough to play accurately. If the bishop plays here, I give a check, and then there's this deflection. Um, rook here is just trying to be sneaky. <laughs> With bishop takes and then rook takes bishop. I might do that in a bullet game or something just to make a quick threat. Uh, so there's also just rook check and then knight here. I think that seems pretty good, actually. That might be... That's actually netting material. Or the bishop has to take. That's the that's the trick. Okay, that's, uh, that's losing some stuff here. I, I actually have knight check or just knight takes knight. If I give a check and then maybe get the rook here. No need to do that calculation, though. Just play fast. That's the plan. Play here. That pawn's going to go. I get the pig on the... One pig on the second. 
and uh, let's hit a bishop. And time pressure gets the best of anybody. Okay, where are the time burners? Okay, look up and overs. More checks. One pig, mate and two. All right. The typical uh, mouse race towards the end. All right, good game. Let's back up. Let's see. Interesting middle game. Uh, let, let's see how we could make some improvements here. Either one of us. Knight or Sicilian. H5. Um, I think I posted a video on my YouTube channel a while back out of this variation where I did have black, and I think the game ended up in a draw. Uh, so I do provide a bit more insight with regard to this h5 idea. I don't know, uh, actually I think in that game h4 was was played as well. Um, I didn't do the best against it, but I, I um, this bishop e2 move, okay, this is where, actually let me back up, I think this right here is maybe a bit off. You could try to baby step it in the following way, like if you really wanna be getting in this g4 move, you could be running with, and I'm not saying right away, but given the time, you could be going with g3, h3, and then g4. In that order, you'll also need to take into account that your rook is unprotected. Uh, so, you know, maybe, maybe getting your bishop out, but if you do want to get g4 in, you'll have to baby step it, as otherwise h3 is met with h4, and there's, there's no way to get in g4 successfully because I always have that en passant move. Uh, so, you could consider that instead of this particular pawn move. Then you're not having to, and another way to look at it is you won't be having to do what? You won't be having to devote a rook to this g1 square just to facilitate a pawn advance. If you press forward in the correct order with your own pawns, your rook is not needed for such a role. Uh, so, you're, you're castling bishop e2. I think this is just turning out to be way too slow. Something seems way off with that. So I think looking into those types of pawn advances uh, could turn out to be pretty good because if the H file is going to open up, then I really have to do something quick, do I not? I have to, well, I really don't want a castle, and if the H file opens up, uh, I'm, I'm having to make a decision because you have a lead in development. You're, you're fully developed at this point, rooks in direct contact with one another, so... I think that's worth a, a closer look, or even another idea is to maybe plant up on this uh, d5 square at an earlier point. But look into this different uh, g3, h3, g4 idea. You'll need to be castled and have your bishop on e2, or in other words, your rook on h1 needs to be protected before you actually follow through with that uh, g4 advance. It's another, another angle, another way to look at it, another approach, another plan.